I'm Forrest McFreelov, and this is Speedplay Togert number three. So, we left off with Morocco at war with only Portugal, the only being a key bit. The Ottomans are at war in the north, so their armies are basically going to be busy for a while, and that means if we're going to expand, the best bet is going to be Morocco. Their forces are all outside of their country, so they can't really do anything, and we're basically at our leisure to just go over to them and fabricate a claim and declare war. We've already fabricated the claim, so it's just declaring war. Now you see their army is busy sieging a Portuguese city, so we don't even have to worry about it. Tunis is sending a tin stack over, so once they arrive, we're going to just group them with our force, detach a siege, and attack. We're also going to split the rest of our forces and try to get them to head off the Moroccans. With that done, we quickly stack wipe them, and now it's just a matter of carpet sieging their country. Needless to say, this war went a lot better than the last war we had with Morocco, as we've essentially taken care of them. Now, at this point, the Ottomans are in another war, we'll just let them do that. As long as they don't declare war on the Mamluks, we're going to be in a fantastic spot. So then, as the siege continues, what we're going to do is vassalize Morocco. This puts us in charge of their war against Portugal, but we're just going to call Tunis into that and do the same thing. And there we go, the Portuguese army's been destroyed, and they won't really be able to do anything about us now. Occasionally there is the random fight, but nothing really to worry about. Admittedly, the Morocco has a high liberty desire, and that is worrying, however, Hopefully we'll be able to improve our relations with them enough that that will no longer be a problem in a little while. And there we go, we've given them the rest of their provinces in North Africa, and just like that we have a pretty much solid front on the west, and now it's just a matter of the east. So we can go to war, however the Ottomans won't come. We're going to start colonizing and get exploration ideas, so we kill the natives so that we don't have to worry about that and move our forces over to the east. We can only really declare war on the Mamluks, as the Ottomans are allied to Tunis, and while they won't accept a war or a call to arms against the Mamluks, they will accept a call to arms from Tunis against us. So what we're going to do is just increase the relations of the Iberians and wait for the Ottomans to accept our call to arms. The main thing is we don't want anyone in Europe to attack us, so I'll just keep improving relations as much as I can. The Ottomans will now accept our call to arms, so it's time for us to move against Tunis. What we're going to do is declare war on the Mamluks, calling in the Ottomans. We're immediately going to rush our army over and declare war on Tunis. The Ottomans can't join both wars, and they've already joined the first, so we're in the clear. It's just a matter of chasing down their army, we build a couple mercenaries to help with that, and we get an event to improve defenses, we just improve defenses on the border, and there we go, we begin to siege them out and declare er, and defeat their army. Now we end up moving our armies north for sieges, and that's an important thing. We had been sieging provinces that only had one tax income, but the provinces we're sieging now are their most wealthy provinces. So it's a bit of an innovation since the last war, and hopefully it'll make a difference. We're also taking our combined Moroccan and our own army, and using it to just destroy any force that comes up. It's basically the same plan as previous wars had used, but it's going much better than they ever had. And as we're going about, all we have to worry about is beating the Ottomans in their siege of the Mamluks, as ultimately the main concern now is that we are able to make the peace with the Mamluks. If the Ottomans make peace with the Mamluks on their own terms, then for, then uh, one, we'll have to fight the Mamluks on our own, and that'll be terrible and terrifying, and two, the Ottomans will get a large amount of land and eventually press even further into the Mamluks, which is something we really need to stop from happening. So I consider for a moment making Tunis release a country in the north, I decide against that. What we'll do is just completely integrate as much of Tunis as we can and make them release uh, Tripoli. So until we do that though, it's just going to be a continuation of the old plan, plus 
we now begin to move our forces into the Mamluks to begin sieging them out. We're going to just move the army as far forward as we can in order to open up as many provinces for our sieging forces and also to get as far of a foothold as we can. We're going to quickly siege out with Tunis after deciding what the best war goal is. With these lands, we'll be able to form Algiers later, although we're not going to do that at the moment, and perhaps not at all. At any rate, we've also made them release Tripoli, which we can quickly go in and vassalize once this war ends. The, Re the Reformation has started, which is going to be very noteworthy in the future, I'd imagine, and we are beginning even more sieges in North Africa. We're basically going to just continue down this sort of path as we bring more forces from Tunis and the rest of our country over. We have a bit of an issue with a lack of admin points for coring the lands we've gotten, and that's going to get worse, not better, as time goes on, at least until this war is over. I tried to steal that siege from the Ottomans by having them connect to my army, but they had none of that and I begin to move my forces to carpet siege the Mamluks and explore in the New World. So what we only have to worry about now is the Ottomans leaving the war before we have everything that we want. However, it doesn't really seem as though that's much of a risk as the Ottomans have begun to siege Hejaz. However, it's still one of those instances where the quickest solution is probably the best. Now we do also have a slight worry about revolts, so we're going to begin to use our military points to get rid of those. And beyond that, it's just a matter of a few harsh treatments, exploration, and waiting for these sieges to finish. And so at this point, I've noticed that we can actually go all the way to the Red Sea. So while we don't actually have the tech right now to colonize in the New World, and we are just colonizing in Saharan Africa right now. Worst case, if we can't get the tech in time, by having a port in the Red Sea, we might be able to just jumpstart the colonization of Asia. Maybe go all the way to Africa's Cape, and at any rate, hopefully be able to completely beat the Europeans on one front. That might not be the ideal goal, however, it's great to keep that open. Here you see we're increasing the autonomy of our provinces as we have tremendous war exhaustion and essentially no points of any type. Quickly we vassalize Tripoli and just begin to defeat their rebels. What we're going to have to worry about mainly in the near future is just Morocco trying to break free. We are probably just going to go over and quickly begin integrating them as well as coring what provinces we can. If we had a better ruler, then this would be a fairly easy venture. As it is right now, though, the main thing that we have to do is just make sure we don't get any terrible revolts. The big threat is just that Morocco is going to try to declare independence. We really don't have enough power to make them docile, so it's just a matter of us basically hoping, as terrible of a strategy as that is, it's just us hoping that they don't rebel in the time it takes for us to integrate them. We do have a huge issue with revolts, and all of our military points are basically going to go into just basically stopping anyone with harsh treatment from actually getting to 100%. And that's going to be the majority of what we do with military points. All of our admin points are going to be spent coring, at least in the near future, and all of our Diplom points are going to be spent lowering war exhaustion just to help stymie any revolts on that front, or really either front. Now, what we can do is begin, set, or begin exploring around the Cape of Africa, and just exploring in general. We probably won't be able to use any of our points to get tech in the near future. So we'll be pretty behind by then, and the Western powers will have been able to use that time to get a foothold. You see our tech is terrible though, that's the main issue, and all that means is that once we manage to get all of these areas cored, we just prevented the last worrying revolt, all we have to do now is save up our points, and hopefully our leader will die. We have a very good heir, our leader is currently pretty bad, we can improve 
the size of our army a little bit to maybe hold off Morocco revolting. Overall though, we need to get our tech sorted. We need, more than anything else, to get our current leader, who is really poor, to die somehow and be succeeded by the better heir. Now we get a call to arms from the Ottomans, and we accept it because we really can't even begin to afford losing them as an ally. Not when we're so technologically backwards. And right now you see we're beginning to deal with our trade income. I eventually move one merchant to Alexandria to push trade back, and another to Safi. And here we go, we are colonizing the last available colony. Once again, we kill the natives. And here you see I had actually made a mistake, and I finally send that merchant to Safi. He had been sitting in Sevilla doing not anything, really. So from here, though, we're in a good place. We just need to build everything back up, mainly our tech, get a better leader. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Togert's gone very far. Now we just have to make sure we stay where we're at.